us not to this YouTube channel, Best Science Brain YouTube channel. Today we are giving you a physics content on equilibrium of forces. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe by tapping on the subscription button or the icon. You're going to see on the channel's name, Best Science Brain, you're going to see a bell. Under it, the tiny bell or the subscription button, you tap on it once and get subscribed. If you have subscribed before, you don't need to subscribe again. But if you subscribe again, you're gonna, you are going to unsubscribe yourself. So, if this is for those who have not subscribed before, subscribe and then you will see our videos from time to time. Subscription doesn't take anything away from you, rather, anytime we post video, You'll be getting notifications and you'll be seeing our videos in chemistry, um, physics, and further mathematics. Then, for our subscribers, I thank you all. Those who have been following us, those who have been watching our videos, I thank you all. Those who have been sharing our videos, I also appreciate you. And um, the new subscribers, you can share our videos on Facebook, you can share our videos on WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group of students, we have group chat of students, you can share the videos so that you have some topics, all the topics will have more than 50 videos. You go through the topics and look at the topics that are interesting and that you want to study, you look at them and then share the videos to friends, invite them to this new channel where things happen. So today we are looking at the equilibrium. So what is the equilibrium? The equilibrium is that single force that will balance two or more forces taken together. That single force that to balance two or more forces taken together is called the equilibrium of forces. In our former video, we did resultant of forces. So we're going to see the relationship between resultant and equilibrium of forces. For instance, let's assume we have force F1, F2, and F3 acting at a point Z O, and these three forces are at equilibrium. And then let the angle between F1 and F2 be theta. So if the three forces F1 and F2, F3 are at equilibrium, what it means is that each force is an equilibrium of the other two. That means F1 is an equilibrium of F2 and F3. F2 is an equilibrium of F1 and F3. Whereas F3 is an equilibrium of F1 and F2. So let's consider F3 to be an equilibrium of F1 and F2. And you know that from better diagram, when two forces are at equilibrium, Resultant is drawn with, at their point of intersection. So the resultant of F1 and F2 is R. Now the resultant R is equivalent to F3. So what I will say, the equilibrium and the resultant are equal, but they act in opposite direction. So F1 and F2 are forces acting at angle theta. Where R is the resultant? F3 is the equilibrium. So F3, the equilibrium force, and the resultant force are always equal but are in opposite direction. So let's take an instance, the problem on the board. Let's look at this problem. We have two forces, 3 Newton, 4 Newton, at equilibrium with a force E. The angle between 3 and 4, let's say, is 120. You have to find the value of E. You have three forces at equilibrium. 
3 newton force, 4 newton force, and E keeping an object at equilibrium. Then we are asked to find the value of E. And then the angle between the 3 newton force and 4 newton force is 120 degrees. Look at this metal diagram. The force E is the equilibrium of 3 newton and 4 newton. Then how do we solve this problem? The angle between 3 newton and 4 newton is more than 90 degrees. And then when the angle between two vectors is more than 90 degrees, we apply the parallelogram law of vectors. So here is 3 newton, here is 4 newton, here is also 4 newton, and here is 4 3 newton. So we are going to look for the resultant. Uh, why do we look for the resultant? Because the resultant is equivalent to the equilibrium. The at in opposite. So this is the equilibrium at in this direction. This is the resultant at in this direction. The two of them are equal. So we are looking for the equilibrium of two forces. You are in other words looking for the resultant. So the angle here is 120. Applying the formula we used in our previous video for finding resultant. We say that F R square is equal to F1 square plus F2 square plus 2 times F1 times F2 cos of the angle between them. So F R, that is the resultant, is our resultant F R equal to take this as F1, 3 square, taking F2 as 4 plus 2 times 3 times 4 cos 120. So if you solve this, f r square, 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16. If you add half 25 plus 2 times 3 is 6, times this is 24. Cos 120 is negative 0 0.5. So f r square becomes 25 minus 12. Multiply this to half minus 12. And subtract half 13. FR becomes square root of 13. So we'll take the square root of 13. We're going to have 3.61 Newton. Between the, the resultant force. So the equilibrium force. Since resultant force is equal to equilibrium force, that means the force is also 3.61 Newton. So to the minor force. So the equilibrium of two vectors is setting as their resultant but as in opposite direction. So having understood the concept of equilibrium of forces, we now look at another aspect of this. We now look at the Lamy's theorem. The Lamy's theorem. When do I apply the Lamy's theorem? When you have three forces at equilibrium, and of course the lines of action must meet at a point. For three forces to be at equilibrium, the lines of action must meet at a point, must intersect at a point. So let's call this force F1, call this F2, call this force F3. Then how the angles? No, the angles are random. No, they call angle between F2 and F3. Theta, angle between F1 and F3, alpha, angle between F1 and F2, beta. So Lamy's theorem is applied when more than one angle is known. So this time around, having a half only one angle and these two are unknown, we well, have talked about the parallelogram law of vectors. But when you have two angles at least known, and then, of course, you know two angles because not the third one because this angle will at a point. Subtract so these two from 3, 6 to get the other one. So, we have more than, at that given point where the spectrum intersect, you must have more than one angle given to you, at least two angles given to you. You no longer use the program law of vectors to resolve this, to find the forces. You use the Lamy's theorem. Lamy's theorem says, says that when three forces are at equilibrium. Then each force is directly proportional 
to the side of the angle opposite it. So when three forces are at equilibrium, each force is directly proportional to the sign of the angle opposite it. So this is Lamy's theorem. So let's apply it here. Look at this diagram. F1, the angle opposite F1 is theta. When I say F1 over sine theta equal to the angle opposite F2 is alpha. When I say F2 over sine alpha, the angle opposite F3 is beta. We also say F3 over sine beta. So this is Lamy's theorem of solving vectors or forces. So that is it. So let's take an example to illustrate this Lamy's theorem as you look at the board and then watch our solutions. Let's take an example to illustrate this Lamy's theorem. Okay. Now uh, the next example we're going to take now is to illustrate this theorem given by Lamy's. We have this problem on the board. We have here is 12 newton force, the angle here is 120 degrees. Here is 10 newton force, the angle here has means here is uh, 150 degrees. And the angle here is, okay, let me call the angle here F, F, and then we call the angle here 12, not 10 newton. And here you have to find F. So look at this situation. In this situation, we have about two angles at the point. If I want to find this angle over there, I'll add these two and subtract from one in 360. The sum of these two is 270. Subtract 270 from 360, that means here will be around 90 degrees. Okay, we're asked to find F. Look at this problem now. Uh, now, what I'm going to do, F is the force here. And I'll say F over sine, the angle opposite F is 150 equal to, I can pick this force over sine 90, or I use this force over sine 120 equal to 12 over sine 120. So, equating any of the two, and the two you're going to equate, one of them, the force and the angle will be known, while the other one is the unknown force at this angle. So, you make F the subject. F becomes 12 times sine 150 over sine 120. Sine 150 is centered at sine 30, which is 0 0.5. Sine 120 is centered at the sine of this supplementary angle, which is sine 60, which is 0 0.8660. So, solving this, we're going to have. Six point nine three newton. So the force F missing in that equilibrium diagram is six point nine three newton. So stay connected. Watch uh, our solution as we go to the principle of triangle of forces. Principle of triangle of forces. It states that. If thread forces are at equilibrium, they can be represented in both magnitude and direction by the sides of a triangle taken in their correct order. Repeat it. If thread forces are at equilibrium, they can be represented in both magnitude and direction by the size or by the three size of a triangle taken in their correct order. So let us illustrate this principle of triangle forces. How is it applied in solving uh, vector problems? For instance, let's say we have a horizontal plane or platform. Then we have two rows or two cards join at the point and the load hanging down it. 
So let the weight of this load present using W. So let the force that has on this rope be D1. The ten, call it the tension that has on the rope or cord. And the other force that has on this be D2. And let's draw a horizontal plane here. Let the angle here made at the particle here be equal to alpha. Let the angle made at the particle by the here be equal to beta. So take a look at the diagram again. We we'll have a load of weight W or W Newton. Then unit of force is Newton. Hanging freely at the end of two ropes. There are two ropes, and these two ropes are tied on the horizontal plane. The angle the, of inclination of the rope T1 to the particle is alpha. The angle of inclination here is beta. And then this will have formed a kind of triangular vector system. So, how can we solve this problem? How can we find our D1 and D2? To solve this problem, all we need to do is we need to draw a triangle. Draw a triangle. Then we we'll go back to our four diagram. This is our weight. We draw a reaction force. Weight, parallel is weight. That means this force here, here, over under, and this one up are equal. Remember, according to Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So we are taking the force up, this is the reaction for which we to the same weight there. And then the angle between the weight, this is the weight, between the weight and the particle, and, and the T1 and the first rope is alpha. The angle is alpha because these two angles are alternate to each other. The angle between the weight, line of the weight, and the other rope that is beta because these two angles are also alternate to each other. So I repeat myself, we we'll draw a reaction force the opposite the weight. So this is the weight, the same weight will we'll bring it up. Then we we'll find the angle with the this is the weight and this is the first rope. With the weight made with the first rope or the first cord, that angle that should be here. And then it is going to the angle because the two are alternate angles. We we'll also find the angle between the weight and the second rope. The angle is beta because it's the same angle as we have the particle they got the angle are alternate angles. When you have done that, go to your diagram, take the base of the triangle as your weight. Take the base of the triangle as your weight. Let the weight be the base. Then take this as the first chord. Take this as one chord. The tension on the first chord is T1. The tension on the second chord is T2. So having done that, then take the angles in the correct order. The angle between the weight, come back to this first side, the angle between the weight and the first chord is alpha. Between the weight and the first chord is that is D1 is alpha. Go to the diagram. Look at the weight. Look at the first chord. Put the angle here as alpha. Then go back to the diagram. The angle between the weight and the second chord is beta. Go here. This is the weight. This is the line of the second chord. This is where they intersect. Put beta here. Then you can find the angle that is there. How do you find the angle that is there? The sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So let's call the angle here theta. How do we find theta? Theta is going to be 180 minus the sum of alpha plus beta. Now you can get theta. When you have done that, then use Lamy's theorem or use sine root to join them together. And I have W over sine theta. W over sine theta equal to T1 over sine beta equal to T2 over sine alpha. So take the forces and the sign of the angle opposite them. That by Lamy's theorem or by sine rule, they can find the unknown angle. So go through our work as we pro proceed. So the next, we're going to change the diagram again. In our problems, so we're going to 
open up my problems now and then see how I can resolve or can change the nature of the diagram. So we'll take our first problem on the board and see how we can apply the principle of triangle forces. So we'll have a horizontal plane, then we'll have two curves joined at the point. We'll have the force here. We'll have 20 newton there. Then then at the, the horizontal, we we'll have 45 degrees, another 45 degrees here. Then we we'll have tension T and T. So in this problem, we have to find the, tension, the value of the tension, find T at the tension there. So how do we solve this problem on the board? What do we do? The same principle which I have taught earlier on. We draw a reaction force, the line is straight, represent the weight. So since I is 20 newton, also write 20 here. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Then find the angle which the weight this is the makes with the, this chord and made with other chord. So if here is 45 degrees, I know that the whole of this angle is from here to there is 90 degrees. If you have a 5 degree, here will be 45, that is 90 minus 45. If there is 45, here will also be 45, that is 90 minus 45. Remember, the angles at the particle we are not given to us, they go the angle at the horizontal. So we can get it by subtracting 90, this from 90 will have this, this from 90 will have that. When we have done that, we we'll go and sketch our triangle, take the base as your weight, 20 newton. Take the place as T and T. So the angle here between the weight and the first chord is 45, which is the angle you are seeing here. You write 45 over there. The angle between this weight, 20 Newton, and this second chord is also the same 45. You write 45 over here. Having done that, then you find the unknown angle, the angle on, on top here. How do you find the unknown angle? You add this to and subtract from 180. 45 plus 45 is 90. 90 taken out of 180 will give the same 90. So it's the right angle track we're dealing with now. So having done that, we can apply the Lamis theorem and say D over sine 45. That is this force over sine the angle opposite it. T again over sine 45 equal to 20 over sine 90. So having done that, we can take any of them, we can equate this to that, or this to that, but they are equal to themselves. So if you equate this, these two together, you equate, we'll crown multiply half, 20 sine 45 equal to D sine 90. So our T becomes equal to 20 sine 45 over sine 90. Sine 45 is 0 0.7071, sine 90 is 1. So when we multiply the two, we're going to have 14.1 Newton. 14.1 Newton as our answer. So the two forces are equal to themselves. So T is 14. The tension on the rope is 14.1 Newton. So we look at our work as we move to the next problem. So the next problem is what we are taking now on triangle of forces. So we are giving the load here as 4 kg. Then we have the angles are inclined at the particle. The angle given to us here is 60 degrees 
and the angle on inclined vertical on the other one is 45 degrees. And then this is called tension here is T1, that is T2. G is uh, our acceleration to gravity is 10 meters per second square. We have to find T1 and T2. So let's look at the problem very well before we start solving it. We are asked to find T1 and T2. So to solve this problem, what do we do? We have to first of all convert this mass to weight. We've got the mass in kilograms, so it's not a force. Change it to weight. So weight is mass times tension due to gravity. So that becomes 4 times 10, giving us 40 newtons. So the weight down here is 40 newtons. We now draw a reaction force, which is equivalent to this one. So, which is equivalent to this force, that reaction for 40 newton. Then find the angle between, between the weight and each of the rows. So the angle here is 60, the angle is in that position here, no longer at, at the horizontal. Here is 60, here is also 60 by virtue of alternate angles. Then the angle between this load, this weight and this load. Here is 45 degree, here is also the same 45 by virtue of alternate angles. Having done that, we we'll now go ahead and draw a triangle and take the load at the base. The load is 40 newton at your base. Then this place is your T1, this place is your T2. The angle between the load and the first T1 is 60 degrees. That's the angle here. You put it at this point. The angle between T2, that this rope and the load is 45. Put at the point of intersection 45 degrees. Then you find the angle here. How do you find the angle here? You add these two and subtract for 180. 60 plus 45 is 105. Take it away from 180, don't get half 75 degrees. We apply Lamy's theorem. So apply Lamy's theorem now have 40 over sine 75. That is each of the force over the force of the angle, sine of the angle opposite it. T1 over sine 45, T2 over sine 60. So having done that, I can connect the first two because look at the, the angles are not the same. That means the value of T1 and T2 will be different from each other. And I say 40 over sine 75 equal to T1 over sine 45. We'll cross and apply and make T1 the subject. T1 now becomes 40 times sine 45 all over sine 75. So when we solve this, we will have 40 times sine 45 divided by sine 75. We are now having 29.3 newton. 29.3 newton as our T1. So having obtained T1 as 29.3 newton, we go ahead again and then equate this to this. We now have 40 over sine 75 equal to T2 over sine 60. You cross and apply and make this the subject. T2 becomes 40 times sine 60 over sine 75. When you solve this, 40 times sine 60 over sine 75, you get approximately um, 36 Newton. So from this information, from this uh, problem, our T1 is uh, 29.3 newton, our T2 is 36 newton. So go through our work as we take other problems. Showcase the principle of triangle forces. We have uh, a load of 20 newton, and
and they have two ropes, and then the angles they are 60 and 60. And so how do we solve this problem? This diagram looks are somehow different from the ones who have solved, the ones we saw previously. So how do we solve this problem? We can still use the principle of triangle of forces. But I'm going to have, I can create under orientation of this diagram to look like the previous ones we have, we had. So look at the one we had before. The kind of diagram we drew in the previous problem. So we can make this diagram to look like this also. So what have I done? I have cut this edge and inverted it. So this plane remains like T and T. The angle here is 60, 60 will be placed here. This is 60, this is a 60. Then the force here is 20 Newton. You see, it's the different diagram. But what I have done is to create another orientation. by virtue of alternate angle. But the angle I'm looking for is the angle between the weight and each of the each of the cuts. So if here is 60, here are going to be 30. That is 90 minus 30 degrees. If here is 60, here are going to be 30 also because 90 minus 60 gives you 30 degrees. You see, we have resolved this in a simple way. So we now use the principle of triangle forces also. So the base is 20, we take the base, this the base as the weight. Then this is T and also T. The angle between the load and this rope is 30, we put it here. The angle between the weight and the other rope is also the same 30, we put the 30 here. You see. So find the angle at this point. So this is a triangle. The sum of my angle of triangle is 180. 30 plus 30 is 60, 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees. We now solve using the principle of Islamic theory or sine rule. Now have 20 over sine 120 equal to T over sine 30. Also, the same T again over sine 30. So, summing this, what do we do? We now join, we can take this and that. So by cross multiplying, we now have T sine 120 equal to T equal to 20 sine 30. So our T now becomes 20 sine 30 over sine 120, making T the subject of the formula. Sine 30 is 0 0.5. And sine 120 is 0.3660. So we'll solve. Our T becomes 11.5 Newton. 11.5 Newton. So that is the answer. So if you look at go back to the solution, the value of T is the same values. So T is 11.5 because the same T is 11.5. So the tension here is 11.5 that is 11.5 Newton. So watch as we go to another application. So we look at the situation of non-parallel forces. Non-parallel concurrent forces, keeping the body at equilibrium. So, forces are non-parallel when they meet at a point. So, let's assume that the horizontal plane, which present maybe the ceiling. Then, we now have a diagram of this nature. 
have a load here adding downwards then this have a taken is the rope T1 and that rope on this direction T2 so this is the weight and it's being supported by this supporting cord supporting cord to the ceiling and the tension on the supporting cord is T1 and the same load is drawn by under cord which is T2 to keep it at equilibrium and then we have an angle here we can call angle theta so this is a situation of what we call non-parallel forces keeping the body at equilibrium non three non-parallel forces or concurrent forces now why do we say they are not parallel because the lines of action are meeting at a point so we have a situation like this how do you resolve or how do you solve this kind of situation to solve it you use a right angle triangle you draw a right angle triangle draw a right angle triangle drawn then this is angle 90 now the weight, look at the weight, direction acting vertically upward, downwards. We use this side as the weight. The side that acting vertically downwards, the right hand side is the weight. Then our T2, we now use it here. T2 is horizontal, that is the horizontal cord. The supporting cord, the one slanting, the tension there is this one here, T1. The tension there is T1. Then the slanted side of the triangle becomes the supporting cord. Then the angle here is theta. Theta, that is the angle we are seeing the triangle there. So when you want to solve this kind of problem, you apply either the Pythagoras theorem, Pythagoras theorem for the size, or Sokatua for the three ratio to resolve this kind of issue. So what you have is in case of non-parallel concurrent forces, you have to apply the Pythagoras theorem. So let's take one example here, then modify the diagram and then see what we can make out of it. So assuming we have that they, we have a mass of there's a mass of 2 kg acting down there, and the angle here is 30 degrees. I also find T1 and T2. So take a look at the problem first for we'll solve it. We have to find T1 and T2 in this system of non parallel uh, concurrent forces keeping an object at equilibrium. So when you have this situation, how do we go about it? We we'll draw a right angle triangle. Then Angle here is 30 degrees, as you can see there. Then the tension there is T1, the slanting side, that is cutting cord. Then the horizontal force, the tension there is T2. Why this will represent the weight? The weight, we have to convert this in kilogram. I'll convert this weight to Newton. Weight is mg, which is 2 times 10, taking 10 as acceleration due to gravity. That gives us 20 newton. So this place is 20 newton. So to find T1, the angle here is 90. This is the right angle triangle. To find T1, we have a side and an included angle. That means we're going to use circle two or, or three ratios. Now you look at the triangle very well. T1 is the longest side of the triangle. That T1 is the hypotenuse. 20. Now represents the adjacent because T2 is the side facing angle 30, T2 is opposite. So this is the hypotenuse, longest side of the triangle. This is the opposite, while this side is the adjacent. So to find our T1 and combine adjacent and hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is cause, so called to our cause. So I now say cos 30 equal to adjacent, that is 20 over T1 over hypotenuse. So I'll go ahead and make T1 the subject by cross multiplying. 
d1 now becomes 20 over cos 30. Cos 30 is 0 0.866. So when I solve, dividing 20 by cos 30, I'm going to have 23.1 Newton as my d1. To find t2, let me go up. To find t2, we go the diagram again. T2 is the opposite. I'm combining opposite now and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent gives me tan. So I now have T2 opposite over adjacent equal to tan 30. So T2 becomes 20 times tan 30. So solving this out, 20 times tan 30. Give me about 11.5 Newton as my T2. So you go through our work and see how we tackle the problem. Okay, so having done that, stay connected as we look at jam questions.